In physics, a unified field theory UFT is a type of field theory that allows all that is usually thought of as fundamental forces and elementary particles to be written in terms of a pair of physical and virtual fields. According to the modern discoveries in physics, forces are not transmitted directly between interacting objects, but instead are described and interrupted by intermediary entities called fields. Classically, however, a duality of the fields is combined into a single physical field. For over a century, unified field theory remains an open line of research and the term was coined by Albert Einstein, who attempted to unify his general theory of relativity with electromagnetism. The theory of everything and grand unified theory are closely related to unified field theory, but differ by not requiring the basis of nature to be fields, and often by attempting to explain physical constants of nature. Earlier attempts based on classical physics are described in the article on classical unified field theories. The goal of a unified field theory has led to a great deal of progress for future theoretical physics and progress continues. Topic. Introduction Topic. Fields Governed by a global event Lambda Display style Lambda under the universal topology, an operational environment is initiated by the scalar fields Phi Lambda element of phi plus x carrot lambda phi minus x lambda display style phi lambda in phi carrot plus hat x lambda phi carrot check x lambda of a rank zero tensor, a differentiable function of a complex variable in its domain at its zero derivative, where a scalar function phi plus x carrot lambda y plus display style phi carrot plus hat x lambda subset y carrot plus or Phi minus x lambda y minus display style phi caret check x lambda subset y caret is characterized as a single magnitude with variable components of the respective coordinate sets x caret x zero x 1 display style hat x x caret 0 x caret 1 c d o t s or x x 1 x 2 x 3 Display style check x x underscore one x underscore two x underscore three. Because a field is incepted or operated under either virtual or physical primacy of an y plus display style y caret plus or y minus display style y caret manifold respectively and simultaneously, each point of the fields is entangled with and appears as a conjugate function of the scalar field phi minus display style phi caret or phi plus display style phi caret plus in its opponent manifold. A field can be classified as a scalar field, a vector field, or a tensor field according to whether the represented physical horizon is at a scope of scalar, vector, or tensor potentials, respectively. 
Therefore, at the scalar potentials, the effects are stationary projected to and communicated from their reciprocal opponent, shown as the following conjugate pairs phi plus x carrot lambda phi minus x lambda display style phi caret plus hat x lambda var phi caret check x lambda q quad phi minus x lambda phi plus x caret lambda x caret element of y plus display style var phi caret check x lambda mapsto phi caret plus hat x lambda caret asterisk hat x in y caret plus phi minus x lambda phi plus x caret lambda display style phi caret check x lambda var phi caret plus hat x lambda q quad phi plus x caret lambda phi minus x lambda x element of y minus display style var phi caret plus hat x lambda mapsto phi caret check x lambda caret asterisk check x in y caret where asterisk denotes a complex conjugate a conjugate field phi minus equals phi plus display style phi caret equals var phi caret plus caret asterisk of the y plus display style y caret plus scalar potential is mapped to a field in the y minus display style y caret manifold and vice versa that a conjugate field phi plus equals phi minus display style phi caret plus equals var phi caret caret asterisk of the y minus display style y caret scalar potential is mapped to a field in the y plus display style y caret plus manifold in mathematics if fz is a holomorphic function restricted to the real numbers it has the complex conjugate properties of fz equals f asterisk z asterisk which leads to the above equation when x caret equals x Display style hat x caret asterisk equals check x is satisfied. Topic forces. All four of the known fundamental forces are mediated by fields, which in the standard model of particle physics result from exchange of gauge bosons. Specifically the four fundamental interactions to be unified are Strong interaction, the interaction responsible for holding quarks together to form hadrons, and holding neutrons and also protons together to form atomic nuclei. The exchange particle that mediates this force is the gluon. Electromagnetic interaction, the familiar interaction that acts on electrically charged particles. The photon is the exchange particle for this force. Weak interaction, a short-range interaction responsible for some forms of radioactivity, that acts on electrons, neutrinos, and quarks. 
It is mediated by the W and Z bosons. Gravitational interaction, a long-range attractive interaction that acts on all particles. The postulated exchange particle has been named the graviton. Modern unified field theory attempts to bring these four interactions together into a single framework. Topic: History. Topic: Classic theory. The first successful classical unified field theory was developed by James Clerk Maxwell. In 1820 Hans Christian Ørsted discovered that electric currents exerted forces on magnets, while in 1831, Michael Faraday made the observation that time-varying magnetic fields could induce electric currents. Until then, electricity and magnetism had been thought of as unrelated phenomena. In 1864, Maxwell published his famous paper on a dynamical theory of the electromagnetic field. This was the first example of a theory that was able to encompass previously separate field theories namely electricity and magnetism to provide a unifying theory of electromagnetism. By 1905, Albert Einstein had used the constancy of the speed of light in Maxwell's theory to unify our notions of space and time into an entity we now call spacetime and in 1915 he expanded this theory of special relativity to a description of gravity, general relativity, using a field to describe the curving geometry of four-dimensional spacetime. In the years following the creation of the general theory, a large number of physicists and mathematicians enthusiastically participated in the attempt to unify the then known fundamental interactions. In view of later developments in this domain, of particular interest are the theories of Hermann Weyl of 1919, who introduced the concept of an electromagnetic gauge field in a classical field theory and, two years later, that of Theodore Kaluza, who extended general relativity to five dimensions. Continuing in this latter direction, Oscar Klein proposed in 1926 that the fourth spatial dimension be curled up into a small, unobserved circle. In Kaluza-Klein theory, the gravitational curvature of the extraspatial direction behaves as an additional force similar to electromagnetism. These and other models of electromagnetism and gravity were pursued by Albert Einstein in his attempts at a classical unified field theory. By 1930 Einstein had already considered the Einstein-Maxwell-Dirac system Dongen. This system is heuristically the super-classical limit of the not mathematically well-defined quantum electrodynamics. One can extend this system to include the weak and strong nuclear forces to get the Einstein-Yang-Mills-Dirac system. The French physicist Marie-Antoinette Tonnelat published a paper in the early 1940s on the standard commutation relations for the quantized spin-2 field. She continued this work in collaboration with Erwin Schrödinger after World War II. In the 1960s Mendel Sachs proposed a generally covariant field theory that did not require recourse to renormalization or perturbation theory. In 1965, Tonnelat published a book on the state of research on unified field theories. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Modern progress. In 1963, American physicist Sheldon Glashow proposed that the weak nuclear force, electricity, and magnetism could arise from a partially unified electroweak theory. In 1967, Pakistani Abdus Salam and American Steven Weinberg independently revised Glashow's theory by having the masses for the W particle and Z particle arise through spontaneous symmetry breaking with the Higgs mechanism. This unified theory modeled the electroweak interaction as a force mediated by four particles, the photon for the electromagnetic aspect, and a neutral Z particle and two charged W particles for weak aspect. 
As a result of the spontaneous symmetry breaking, the weak force becomes short range and the W and Z bosons acquire masses of 80.4 and 91.2 GeV, C2, respectively. Their theory was first given experimental support by the discovery of weak neutral currents in 1973. In 1983, the Z and W bosons were first produced at CERN by Carlo Rubbia's team. For their insights, Glashow, Salam, and Weinberg were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1979. Carlo Rubbia and Simon van der Meer received the prize in 1984. After Gerardus T. Hooft showed the glashow weinberg salam electroweak interactions to be mathematically consistent, the electroweak theory became a template for further attempts at unifying forces. In 1974, Sheldon Glashow and Howard Georgie proposed unifying the strong and electroweak interactions into the georgie glashow model, the first grand unified theory, which would have observable effects for energies much above 100 GeV. Since then there have been several proposals for Gron unified theories, e.g. the patti salam model, although none is currently universally accepted. A major problem for experimental tests of such theories is the energy scale involved, which is well beyond the reach of current accelerators. Grand unified theories make predictions for the relative strengths of the strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces, and in 1991 LEP determined that supersymmetric theories have the correct ratio of couplings for a Georgie Glashow Gron unified theory. Many grand unified theories but not Patti -Salam, predict that the proton can decay, and if this were to be seen, details of the decay products could give hints at more aspects of the grand unified theory. It is at present unknown if the proton can decay, although experiments have determined a lower bound of 1,035 years for its lifetime. <laughs> Current status Theoretical physicists have not yet formulated a widely accepted, consistent theory that combines general relativity and quantum mechanics to form a theory of everything. Trying to combine the graviton with the strong and electroweak interactions leads to fundamental difficulties and the resulting theory is not renormalizable. The incompatibility of the two theories remains an outstanding problem in the field of physics.